it's shocking to me that they don't read the first page. The first page is literally what you're paying, mm -hmm. what you're putting down in deposit. I mean, I don't even understand what you're mortgaging. Um, how do you not look at those numbers? And I'll be honest, I'm human. You know, I make mistakes too. It's right. I would like for you to read it. Yeah, you and Sarah must get along. Exactly, I make tons of mistakes. Yeah, <laughs> tons of mistakes every day. But you know, it is. It's such a shocking thing that people don't read what they sign and act like it's not a big deal. Welcome to Stop Whining About Real Estate. Join us as we chat, sip, banter, and wine with the best in the biz. Grab a glass of your favorite vino, sit back, relax, and let's wine together. Hello and welcome to Stop Whining About Real Estate. I am your host today, Sarah Bierenbaum. With my with me today is my co-host, Emmanuel St. Germain, and our very special guest, Pam Orzan from Coastal Living Realty, South Florida. I South messed that up. Florida. South Florida Real Realty. Estate. Yeah. Got it. There you go. Welcome. It's a mouthful. Yeah. So happy to have you. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Nice heard, to meet you. Nice to meet you guys. Heard a ton about you. Cool little uh, studio here. Thanks. Yeah, we it's cozy in here, right? Uh -huh. We've got some foliage. We've got, it's cool in here. Yeah. Uh-huh. Floridian. Yeah. And it doesn't feel like there's a storm outside. So that's pretty nice too. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So we don't know when, uh, not quite sure when this is going to get released, but we are at the uh, precipice of a major storm coming our way on our, not really our way, coming to the West God, Coast. Right. I feel do terrible. You have, do you have any family or friends? No, I have friends there. Um, one is like, no, I'm like 40 miles away from Tampa. I'm like, 40 miles mm, in a hurricane is nothing. nothing. You're on it. Mm -hmm. So she's chosen to stay. I have a friend whose parents finally have decided to come over to this side. Thank God. And yep. um, Are you hosting anyone at your house? I am not. My family all lives here. So everybody's you know. got a place to go. Yeah, exactly. No There's hurricane no, parties? No. Well, I'll have a hurricane party on myself. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> I just placed my order today uh, for some, you know, bar stockage at the house since kids will be out of school and I'll be busy at work during the daytime hours. But then once five o'clock. I was going to say, I don't recall letting anyone. No, uh, no, not during the day, at night. Yes. Yeah, yes. totally. Pretty, oh. pretty sure we're still it's working. because you're not a real estate agent. We drink during the day. Yeah. <laughs> we are forced to drink during that the day. That explains a lot. Yeah. <laughs> um, so speaking of real estate, how long have you been in this industry? Uh, 25, going on 25 years. That's a long time. Yeah, exactly. So That's you've seen all kinds of changes. You've seen highs, lows. Yeah. Um, you know, when I, st I started in 2000 and it was very normal. It was very, um, the rates I think were kind of where they are now, okay. you know, um, maybe like six high fives, low sixes. Um, and I was green as you could possibly be. I was, oh my God. And I looked, I was in my twenties and I looked probably like I was 17. My broker <laughs> told me to get a more serious car because no one's going to take me seriously. I had a little um, Acura Integra. Oh, I no. think those I are those are serious. fine, actually. Yeah, I'm going to get yeah, another okay. one, actually, now that I was thinking about it. Um, I mean, it is South Florida. you got to dress the part. Right. So I did that. I upgraded to my little BMW at the time because yeah. he told me to. And um, which, by the way, I'm never going to. I'm never going to have another BMW after that, but that's a whole side note. Um, but yeah, so I was like, I was fresh and I was green, but he, I was like a, you know, full on hundred percent. This is what I'm going to do. I have, I quit my job. I'm one of those, like I quit my job and I'm going to do this Building. now. Well, yeah. what were you doing before? Um, I came from the fashion business, actually. Wow, very cool. What'd you do there? I was young, so I wasn't doing much yet, but I was an assistant buyer. Okay. Oh. So um, a catalog company in Boca. Before that, I was a merchandiser for men's in um, Saks Fifth Avenue in Cleveland, Ohio, which is where I'm from, and um, came here. That's what I was doing. Then I worked for a local uh, women's clothing chain. Okay. She's still around. Um, like uh, I think she's got a store in like Royal Palm Plaza, and uh, I was her assistant buyer, and and that was not making me happy. And I just felt like, why am I in I was sitting inside all day. Yeah. You know, it's not, that's not for me. So I met a realtor. My mom's house was for sale and I went there for dinner and she had a showing. And this realtor, very well-known realtor, still around. Okay. Um, she sells like the castles okay. um, at this point in time. And um, she was like, oh, just try it. It's no big deal. Like, you know, it's like try my cheeseburger. Huh? Was your mom's house at Castle? It was not. Okay. It was a uh, country club house, though. <laughs> gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Um, so she was like, just try it, you know. And I'm like, all right. She's like, go back to your old life. And I'm that person. I am that person. I'll just quit and do something new if I think I can do it and enjoy it. And I guess 25 years later, here I am. Here you are. 
That's pretty I like awesome. It. So where have you focused? Okay, so whenever someone says uh, I'm a realtor or something like that, I mean, there's so many different genres, so many different areas. Um, if someone were looking you up online, right, from that standpoint, like where should they narrow their focus? Like what would you say is has been more your your strengths, your areas of, that you like working or that you're good at? Yeah, I'm Delray girl. I always feel like I'm Delray girl. So local. You go local. Yeah. Um, you know, back in the day, I would schlep out to Weston for somebody. I don't do those things anymore. I right. really try to keep local and keep what I know. I also think, you know, I remember – I had a customer. He was from Ohio. His parents were going to buy a house. I was young, and they wanted to look in Weston. And at that time, I so I lined up eight homes to see that day, and I'll never forget this. They were all the same house. They were all the same model, and I had no day, I had no idea. Yeah. So I was embarrassed, and I just felt like, ugh, I don't know this. And it took me an hour to get there. So I do uh, mostly East Boca, East Boynton, East Delray. Um, but I go everywhere, but, you know, I try to stay within my wheelhouse, and that's kind of Your expertise what I do. There. Yeah, I'm, I'm very Delray-centric. I've been living in Delray since 1999. Oh, wow. Yeah. Very cool. Emmanuel so, lives in Delray. So I live in Delray. I live downtown, too. It's the best. Yes. So yeah. I take the golf cart over. So I, I basically, my truck, I get home on a Friday, and there's many a weekends my truck doesn't get used other than... To, well, I know if I play pickleball in Delray, the, the truck might not even get used at all. Which is awesome. Yeah, I'm about yeah. a mile west of downtown. Okay. okay. So it takes me, it's about a four or five minute drive. So the two restaurants that I miss the most, bring them back, Butch, is 32 East. Oh, yeah. Tell me about it. And um, Trist. Yep. Oh, I forgot about Trist. Trist, Trist that is amazing. spot so has been good. so many things. Trist was so good. I used to, that used to be like my like date that Trist was like our spot. You to know go. where you meet people. Yeah, we would get like snacks, martinis, this and then start Let's our night there. Talk about date places. I like this. Maybe <laughs> you'll give me Trist. some ideas. Trist, right. yeah. Trist had so, a really good pad thai. A lot of really people good go to Dada. Dada. Yeah. I don't like that for a date place. It's a little too um, bohemian for me. Oh, I like from, that. From a quirky. date perspective. You know, so I should I not tell this gross story? Janine knows. We I can like be gross, gross stories. I can be gross sometimes. So. I don't eat, um, you know, like stuffed grape leaves, like yeah. the Greek. The domatas yeah. are, yeah. I, yeah, I can never say it. I don't eat those anymore because of Dada, because mm. I would go there on these dates, right? And I would meet guys on a date, and I would have a martini, and then I'd have another martini, and then he'd be like, let's order the Mediterranean platter. And they all order the Mediterranean platter. <laughs> and then I'm like, let's have another martini, and then let's have another martini. And I would go home and get sick from those things. So I stopped eating those from, and that's probably been 20 years now since I I've love the those. rationale is it was the grape leaves' fault. It was. Yes. Absolutely. Not this just that. So that's funny that you picked up on that part. Well, because that's something that I would do. Well, the other piece <laughs> I picked up on was was why are all the guys ordering the Mediterranean platter? Correct. I think it's because an easy thing to get and it and has share. variety and, share. and it's shareable and it like there's not your so hope. You're you guys are going off the menu. I was trying to figure out if it had something to do with the way you looked. Oh um, um, no, no, because thinking it was that more, you would enjoy that. No, I would go that a man People was probably think thinking big. like this is easy. It's finger food. It's not messy, and it's got enough options to where she's gonna like something. That's what I think. Yeah. That's that, and maybe I'm giving the guys mm -hmm. too much credit for thinking that far into it. Yeah. No, no, no. It's probably very smart knowing that's very hard to pin you down on on liking one thing. Right. So I just figured, you know, it's like the, it's it the is. sampler it's a nice platter. nice sharing thing. Yeah, I, I'm with her. I yeah. feel like that's what it is. It's yeah. like a nice sharing thing. So yeah. Dada was one of my tryst, and Dada tryst was, was like Trist was great. Now places. it's what, the green room? The the, yeah, that green room. The green room. Did yeah. I ever tell you my 32 East story? Oh, boy. The Palm Beach oh, I have Walker a fun one story. Too. Did I ever tell you that story? No, but I'm scared. Do you know what a Palm Beach Walker is? Palm Beach Walker, no. I'll let you Google it after the show. So we're at, we're in. <clears throat> but wait, is this like? I'm I'm imp gonna tell the story. Okay, great. You can kind of figure it out. All right. So um, we're we're <laughs> in Trist. Uh, excuse me. We're in 32 East, and I'm wearing some sweater. You know, I was I was pretty clean cut back then, and. I don't know. I've got to be 26, 27, 28 years old, something around oh, that age, right? picture in here. And uh, this older woman, older, you know, is younger than I am today, right. but at that time was older, is flirting with me and I'm flirting back. And, you know, next thing you know, she goes, you could be a Palm Beach walker. And I'm like, well, what's that? 
And I'm like, I don't. So like, she doesn't really tell me. Right. So and there was no. Turns out then. a Palm Beach Walker is like the male version of a gigolo. Oh. That the the no. rich old ladies of Palm Beach, right. they they they're now widows. Whatever they want, someone who has a sophisticated look, who's intelligent, attractive, to well, go to I'm the kidding. opera with them, and you know, I don't know if sex is involved or not, but. You know, it was very funny, yes. So I Oh, you learn uh, something new every day. My arrival in two thousand five, I was called a Palm Beach Walker. <laughs> now I didn't do this job. I'm just saying that someone <laughs> said I look like it. <laughs> Good to know. So let's not get that twisted. <laughs> that but, is Isn't that funny? Oh my God. Did you yes. take her out? No, I don't. I, no, 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 no. It was just a comment. Like, she didn't even explain what it was. I had to find no, out later on. I don't know if you, you know, the, the night continued with this woman. No, I, I, absolutely not. I went home and prayed about it. <laughs> 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 All right. So back to real estate. Yeah. Now you're very involved in community. Um, I, I hear you're doing great things at the chamber. Tell us a little bit about that. I love the Delray Chamber. Um, I was a member years ago. I always was like one of those people, like the company would join, whatever company I was with at the time, they would join. I would join under the company. And, you know, just like anything, you it, you have to make something of it yourself. You have to be active or you're just going to get nothing out of it. I mean, in the amount of realtors, the amount of mortgage people, title people, insurance people that are joining the chambers, it's in droves, right? I mean, especially realtors. Uh, everybody's a realtor. So um, Janine's a realtor. Uh, but... Um, you have to actually be active and get yourself involved. And I decided I would rejoin. I waited until I started my own company and then I rejoined as that. This way now my agents can join and I um, get that name out, mm -hmm. you know, and I, I love it actually too. It's also just a fun group of people. I had been members of the Boca Chamber, not to bad, I love the Boca Chamber too, yeah. but the it's Delray huge. Chamber is, yeah, because they merged with Boynton. So it's like this ridiculously large um, chamber. But the Delray one has a different vibe to it. It's got that small town vibe, which I love. Yeah. And it's fun and it's party. We're having our big uh, We Are Delray event in November, November 14th. Everybody should come to that at Throw Social because, I mean, oh my God, it's a big party at Throw Social. And um, yeah, so I just, I've met a lot of great people, a lot of friends, a lot of connections. Um, it's been great for my business, getting the business name out there. Yeah. I can't say enough about it. I love that. I think, you know, we, I've been part of the chamber in different capacities and my old job when I worked for Marriott, uh, we were a part of the chamber and did a lot of stuff through there. And then when I joined Choice, uh, we were part of the chamber. And so two completely different capacities, hotels, mortgages. Um, but it is definitely what you put into it is what you get out of it. And there's so many people that I think sometimes you can go, well, there's so many mortgage people. Nobody's going to really notice me. And that might be true if you only go once or twice. Right. But if you continue to go, like I became an ambassador and I was doing a lot and I was part of a leads group and probably got the most out of it from then, obviously, because I was doing the most with it. But you really have to kind of put yourself into it. You do. And yeah. I've gotten business out of it. Now I think I'm the realtor people think of for the most part. There's maybe so one or two others. And that's it. Like that is, that because is it. Because they see my face everywhere. Yeah. Right. I think you have to, I mean, I think you have to enjoy it too. You know, there's, you have to enjoy networking and it's, it's not a, any kind of secret. The look she's, on his face. She's I can laughing see he does not. I don't. He doesn't I don't even enjoy like, networking. He doesn't even like talking about it. When you say, when he says networking, like, uh, his eyes I'm kind listening of, to like this. how much effort you put into it and you get out of it and this and that. I'm like, ugh. <laughs> But Tell it's me. like anything. You know, it's the truth. It's like anything, right? It's like marketing. I mean, I've listened to your guys' podcasts. Like, you, it's consistency. Yeah. Right. Yeah. When but if that's not something you love, you shouldn't do it. Agreed. Mm -hmm. So, like, I like so surgery. So he hired me. <laughs> I like to perform surgery, and that's what, you know, that's what I'm good at. And I like dealing with clients. I like to deal with all that stuff. But having to – it's also a long game. It is. And I think the long game is a different sale – than I'm used to, mm -hmm. right? And I think that's uh, it's probably actually one of the reasons why I'm probably not a very great recruiter in that sense because I don't have the patience to wait it out. Like, I don't want to hit on you for six months before we're going to go out. Like, that doesn't make sense. <laughs> right, exactly. You know, like, th there should be, there should be, there's either a draw there, there isn't. There's There's got to be a way, like, go have coffee, 
hey, do we have anything in common? Do we want to work together? You know, like, are you happy? Like, like any relationship, mm-hmm. you're either currently happy with, with the people that you're working right. with. And if you are, then it's really hard for someone else to come in and disrupt that mm-hmm. without being, you know, in doing it in a, doing it in a way that's respectful, right? So Agreed. it's more, a lot of it is just so much is about timing, you know, and just having a bad experience and I would think it's just like anything else. I, I saw that there's this stat out there that was talking about you ladies. Mm. How I think there was like there's just the, the amount of, of women that had their backup man plan should it not go well with her first. Like it was a, it was something I saw on Instagram. I'm sure you guys That's do the, the same thing. That's where the real news Right. I, I don't know, but the stat was only for women. So uh, clearly. Some must have a men's magazine or something. It was I was going to say, my best friend's a guy. And he is. <laughs> they, a, have a, they have a whole plan. He's way worse than me in any way, shape, or form that way. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I the, the whole point is, is that what happens in that scenario, let's say in the dating scenario, is no different than in the work scenario. Like you have a fight. Okay, well, if you just had a fight with your partner and now all of a sudden, you know, the next day you're at a bar and like you're more receptive. It doesn't have to be a bar anywhere, but like Mm -hmm. you're more receptive to a smile than you would be otherwise. And I think it's the same thing in networking. I think that's a part of me because I'm not the aggressive kind of person. Mm -hmm. And it's the same way that I am in my private life. If I'm, I don't go up to a beautiful woman just to talk to a beautiful woman, like I need to make eye contact. I need there for a smile to be like, I have to drive up my courage a little bit right. because I put myself in their shoes. I don't want to be bothered either. Mm-hmm. Right. Like I don't want someone coming up to me just randomly. And, and so I think in same thing in business, like I, if title company, like, for example, we approach you, title companies approach us. Like if five title companies approach me while we're networking, I have my relationships. One of my best friends owns a company. Mm -hmm. I have lots of other friends who also have companies. Like we're going to, we're going to use those individuals. And unless something really bad happens, like I don't want to waste your time. I know you're trying to do your job. You're trying to network and I don't want to be rude about it, Mm -hmm. but I also don't want to waste my time. Okay. Because this is going to be a 10 minute conversation of you pitching me. And there's no, I, I'm telling you, it's not happening. Right. Like, it's got to be something really bad. I agree 100%. Because, well, I, I have another spin on it, but I also do agree because I feel like I get calls all the time from lenders. Mm-hmm. Can I take you to lunch? Can I take you to coffee? If I did that all day, I would never sell a house. Mm-hmm. I would never sell a house. I mean, oh, my God. And, you know, again, I'm doing this a long time. Of course, I know lenders. Mm-hmm. I don't need you to introduce me. To, and they're like, but I can, I am the king of lenders, and I'm the one that's going to save your customers all night, right? <laughs> I'm the savior. Right. right. Okay. So... <laughs> That being said, I do uh, spread around, and I, of course, I have my preferred lenders, right? Wow, but I do spread it around. I am a little bit, <laughs> depending. I don't take a lot of people, but I have my little pocket because, mm-hmm. so, like, for example, I have a lender that I love, right? But uh, one of my customers didn't love her. Fair. Right? And they didn't click. And um, sometimes I feel like it's just like a home inspector. I got, you know, Janine knows I'm dealing with a customer right now that I, tr- I in 25 years, never had such a bad customer. Oof. And I was so glad in the end that she did not use my home inspector. So sometimes you want to spread it around and say, right. okay, here's three people that I recommend. Yeah. Right. And then I know we'll do a good job. So whoever they pick, it'll be fine. Right. But then my spin on the networking part of it is I, I understand your long game thing because it is, it's truly a long game, but yeah. I look at it like more like casting a net and you catch more than just one person. So I'm not like looking around to find, and sometimes I do it just for my customers. Like I don't necessarily always need a cleaning person, but my customers do right. um, window cleaning. You know, that sort of thing. So People it, it, connector. Exactly. So, mm-hmm. and then when they do a good job, like I have this air conditioning guy that my customers literally call me and be like, he was just left my house and he's the best guy I've ever met. So I love that. It makes me feel good. Like I did a good job and I've done nothing really, but just give him them a phone number. Right. So that's my spin on the networking part that I the do get. The connector part though, I agree because the connector part means that you are held at a higher esteem. Therefore people will go back to you for more and more things. The more times they go back to you, the the more that you're the, you, you know, top like of you, mind. you're the person top of mind when they want to do business, whatever. So that part I agree. And I, I love that too. I'm just very cognizant that in the networking space, exactly as you said, it is title, Realtors, loan officers, we infiltrate 
there's too many of there's us. There's a lot. And so whereas the eight, you know, you don't see 10 AC companies that are there networking. Right. So it's a little bit more defined. It's easier to find a role, a niche, and, and to kind of carve your space out. Um, I think for loan officers, number one, 90 Five percent of them don't do enough business for them to be able to carve their their space out, and ninety nine percent of realtors don't do enough to carve their own space because they'll take a deal doing anything because most right. of them don't do any business. Exactly. So there was just an article put out that um, I, I can't remember the exact statistic, but I, I was talking about it a few months ago where it was like fifty um, percent of realtors sell less than five homes a year. Oh yeah, like that I think is it's more than that. astounding. How do you call that your profession? I I would love for both of our professions to increase the dues. Your dues are what nine hundred now, something like Eight. that. Eight hundred. Mm-hmm. Okay, your dues should be three thousand, and ours should be call it the same three mm-hmm. five three to five thousand. And better training. You can't training. afford that. What's that? And better training. Yes, and if you can't afford that, not a problem. Get out of the industry. Agreed. You know, like 100%. don't. There, there's no reason. And then you can be. You can call yourself a professional. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, there isn't a single sport. There isn't a single, it's the only profession I can think of that someone would have the audacity to call themselves a professional and do one transaction a year. Right. Or not even <laughs> that, you know? Like, how do you remember to do the paperwork next year when you got to go they do don't. one they again? They don't. They see it all the time. They don't. And they go to their, bro- or, well, worse, they're not they even asking their us. broker these things. They're asking these dumb questions on these real estate Facebook groups, yeah. you know, what do I do? How, how do I fill out a contract? I mean, that's the things you should be asking your broker, you know, but there's just so many people in this business because, again, the bar is low, just, you know. The well, I also think low. that they see it kind of as like a glamorous profession. They're like, I can make my own hours. I can be my own boss. I'm going to make a ton of money. They don't see what we, we pay out. And they don't <laughs> see, you know, the kind of the real deal that goes on. And they just see kind of what TV puts out there, what they think it is. Or they see like top agents that they know of and they go, oh, I could, I want to be that. Right. Um, and it's a lot more into it than, than meets the eye, I think, from what they see on social media and TV and everything else. So not to belabor too much the buyer broker agreement, but mm-hmm. just just a, a, a like a matter of fact update. How has it been for you? Have you guys run into any issues thus? So far, I have not. But my company, we have decided uh, to work around it. I'll be honest. I like a buyer broker agreement. I never. I I have been wanting to use that for years. But how can you be the one realtor? Right that says you have to sign this and no and other like, realtor does, else. No. right? right. Um, even top agents are not going to make you sign it. So it was very difficult to implement. Now that we all have no choice, I kind of love that. However, there is a little bit of a, again, as we go back to anybody can be a realtor, right? They have to sign something with you. They don't know. People don't know. You know, they never really pay attention to what their realtor is doing. And I post a lot of things types of things on my Facebook page about, um, know who you're dealing with, you know, ask questions, get, a, I mean, with the internet these days, how people come into these transactions, knowing absolutely nothing of what to expect, you should be asking your realtors some questions before you hire them. So, but that being said, if they don't totally know me or get my personality, cause the truth is I get customers because they like me, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, I happen to, to be competent, but yes, they won't, they like me right mm-hmm. as a person. So, um, they're signing this ridiculous agreement and then, you know, you get these shady agents that are going to lock them in. So I don't lock them in. So we've decided at Coastal Living to not lock anybody in with anything. So there's a zero cancellation fee. Okay. That's what I've been doing. And honestly, they sign it in minutes. I send it over. They sign it right away. And I get a little text back sign. You know, they're happy. They're excited. They want to go home shopping. Right. Yeah. So that really has not been too much of a problem. And I'll be honest, I feel like if they, if that becomes a problem, then goodbye. Because then you're going to be problematic throughout the whole transaction. And go try to find a realtor that's going to, because right now we cannot, you cannot even show one home without that. Right. Right. So go try to find a realtor that's going to do it. Right. Right. Um, But. I mean, I I think it's good that you're, you're open-minded to, to waving that and letting them out of it. I've seen, um, (coughs) I was, I've been to a lot of trainings, classes, all kinds of stuff that we've gone to for agents that uh, different brokers have kind of held and we've been a part of and explaining it from the financing side and, you know, where we step in and how we can help the agents. <clears throat> and I was out with a friend of mine uh, on, in my personal time, and she's looking for a house, and she's working with an agent, and she'd been working with him for a couple months. And he fin- I said to her, I said, "Have you, has he made you sign anything? She was like, no, not yet, but I know something's coming. And I was like, okay. 
So we get out of the car, and this is the first time I was seeing this whole thing happen live. I'd see it role play, and he just, on the trunk of his car, he pulls out this three-page buyer broker agreement. And he's like, listen, you just got to sign this. It basically says you're going to work with me. And then once the days are up that you're working with me, then you can go find another agent if you don't like working with me. And then there's like this 3% thing in here um, that you'll have to pay if the other side doesn't pay. And she's like, okay. And she just signed it. And I was like, <laughs> wait a minute. So he was already showing her homes after, uh, so after it was August? No, 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 it was before. It was before. Yeah, right okay. before they went yeah. in a home. Okay. Yeah. So because I'm like, mm, yeah. no, 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 it was right okay. before. Um, but People don't look at what they sign. So they number one. I agree. But from my standpoint, we had spent hours and days and weeks in trainings and role playing and like building this up. And, and this person just went boop. And the person didn't <laughs> even flip through it. They just, the agent flipped to the page that they signed. They signed it. And that was it. Yeah, but know your audience. You're, that that well, clearly particular <laughs> individual didn't require actual explanation and the problem is if it probably had been explained properly, they might have talked themselves out of a sale as well. Well, also, I think they thought it was 30 days. And I was like, why don't you send that to me? And I was like, this is not 30 days. You're months. locked in until January 1st. Right. Right. The, and that's where I have issue with it. That's where I have issue with it. Because, again, you're trapped with some realtor that's uh -huh. like years and years ago, I, I got a customer that was referred to me. Um, he had a realtor. He wanted to live in Deerfield Beach. He was a young guy. He was working in Boca. But his friends were all in Fort Lauderdale. Okay. So he wanted to live specifically only in Deerfield Beach. And he hired this realtor who kept showing him Boynton. <laughs> Which, I, you know, so he came <laughs> to me. Close. His friend was like, you need a new realtor. Yeah. So he came to me and guess what? I sold him a house in, in Deerfield Beach mm -hmm. in like two minutes. It wasn't very hard. You show him houses in Deerfield Beach and they pick one, right? So <laughs> you're trapped with this realtor that could be completely inept and you're frustrated with them and you know you're, you know know they're doing the wrong thing and then you sign it. You signed this contract mm -hmm. now. And then I'm wondering what's going to happen. Are the brokerages going to go after these people? I'm not. Right. I'm definitely not going to. I, I would have, think a lot of I them are. I have a business idea. What's the best? Oh, here we go. This is what I'm good at. Okay. He hears people talking. He goes, wait a minute. I so, have an idea. <laughs> I have an idea. Sarah, this is what you're going to do next. Okay. So in the background, right, I don't know if you know this. I'm assuming you do. But there is technology that I can look up every single transaction you've done, mm -hmm. who you've done them with, what mm -hmm. the address is. Mm -hmm. I can look at the title companies you use, the lenders you use, everything, mm -hmm. right? The consumer doesn't have access to this. Right. But what if I created a website that allowed Janine to get everything she needs to know about the agent she's going to work with prior to? That'd be amazing. So it'd be amazing for you and I because go ahead, go look at my resume. Right. I've, see right. my 20 years. But the funny thing about that is... That is an amazing idea, How? because that would probably be more detailed. But the truth lot. is you put anybody's <laughs> name in the Internet, right? <laughs> right? Right. So I do that a lot of times with agents I'm working with. Once, typically, if I'm having a really smooth transaction, I won't do it. Um, but if I'm getting, like, Push weird back and things issues. or just, like, you know, incorrect documents, things filled out incorrectly, um, stupid questions, you know, I mean, I hate to say that, but there are truly stupid questions, especially 100%. when you're a realtor, you should know some of these questions. So I look them up, I Google, you, you put their name into Google, um, G-O-O-G-L-E, and you just, it's so <laughs> simple. Um, and our MLS tells us too, I can see what they're selling. So I don't understand why the average person doesn't Look up the realtor. And you don't even need that much information. You just want to see that they're actively working. Yeah. Right? Yeah, but would you, so, I mean, or would you go do. reviews or. Review, rev, reviews, yes, I agree. It's it's better than, reviews are better than nothing. But would you, I'm assuming you both have had, I know you've had surgery. I'm assuming you've had some surgeries in your life, mm -hmm. right? The facelift. <laughs> the first time or the second? It was either the first one or the second one. I'm secretly I, 85 I, years old. Yeah, right? So. I'm just teasing it. But <laughs> the the idea is you would never have surgery without looking up a doctor. Of course. Right? Right. Since this googly has been exactly. out, it's part of what we do. We research them and you do all of that. Okay. Well, it's not as big of a deal if I have the ability to fire you at any point in time. But now you don't. But exactly. now if you That's, have the ability yeah. to lock me in. Right. Here lies the opportunity that I should do a little bit more due diligence. Even just a quick Google but search. the consumers just don't get that yet. Mm -mm. So where— It's coming now. I like it because 
I love working with professionals. I like working with other people. <laughs> it, like, it's really easy when we work together. When a hey, good here's person, what you, got. you get a good person on the other, like right now I've got this deal, this realtor, she's like the best I've had to deal with in a really long time. I'm so, I don't have to ask You're sad anything. that the, transaction, the transaction's going to end. Yeah, like yeah. I don't have to ask anything. And if I text her a question, it gets answered. Yeah. Um, you know, it, I love that. It's just, oh my God, why is this so hard? Mm -hmm. It shouldn't be hard. Yeah. Back to the network thing a little bit, because you basically in, I don't even know if you know that you did this. You basically said everything about my job is incredibly challenging and I do an amazing job because of all the business that I bring in. It's not what I said. <laughs> it's essentially what you said. But <laughs> when I bring agents, so my job is to go out, create relationships, bring in business agents, offices, teams, brokerages, whatever. And, you know, I have a team of loan officers that I can kind of disperse them to. And I like to, based on, you know, what the agent's looking for and what their personality is, kind of match um, that way. And a lot of times I will bring the agent to him with a buyer um, and kind of match them. And, you know, he's been doing this for quite some time. And so when there's an agent that has a lot more questions as opposed to an agent that kind of, you know, gets in and is smooth sailing. Inexperience is the better word. Yeah. Well, questions are fine, but it's somebody who has no clue what they're doing. It right. becomes very time consuming. Correct. Um, and it's, you know, I know that the transactions that are smooth, they feel really good. And you're like, I love this. This is amazing. Oh my God. Because that's and it's what refreshing. this should be. Because I love my business. Yeah. And I right. hate when I have to deal with a customer or a realtor on the other end that... I shouldn't even say the customer because that's the fine. The customer, right. Right. But the, the a title company or a mortgage person or, uh, you know, a home inspector that just makes my life hard. I, I just don't understand this. Really, we should all be working together because to we get, all get paid at the same time. That too. And the end result is making a happy customer that will come back Referrals. to all of us. Yeah. I know. I yeah. don't understand why it has to be hard. It's such a simple process, really. Mm -hmm. It is. So I, I'll tell you something I said today. Oh, boy. Because I, I would assume she's never going to watch this podcast, but this title agent that we did a closing with that <laughs> scared um, had, there was an agreement that was signed and not getting too deep into it required a change on her end. And so she received this agreement on Thursday. And this morning I, I hear, I see the closer and then my closing manager on the email with her and like, I, you know, I'll, I'll get to it very soon. And I finally, I lost it. Like, Hey, this takes two seconds. I need you to change this line, change this line. And then she removes the reply all and only writes to me saying something about the storm. You know, she's got family over there. And I said, I replied black, uh, back and I said, uh, you know, so-and-so, I apologize for what you're going through and I'm empathetic, but there was no storm on Friday when you should have done this. Mm -hmm. I go, so it takes you two minutes. Send me the document so that I can sell this stupid loan and let's move on. Like... Don't don't try and make me feel bad because of the storm. Like you <laughs> got the wrong person. That's manipulation right there. Well, I, I'm I'm very empathetic for for real, for real things, things, but this is business, and this takes. It's literally like it was just changed two yeah, lines on a, a on a closing disclosure. Like it's not. They difficult. have a literally a system. Mm -hmm. It's just a plug and play kind mm -hmm. of thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, that's a two second situation. I was like, ooh, but see, like that's the that in and. To that point, those are that's the kind of individual I would never refer to that title company because of it. Agree. Well, like you know, you just goes, showed me you're an amateur. Well, and it goes to show too. Like I am not, um, I'm not an emotional person in general. Okay, I'm not the most emotional person. You're here. Yeah. <laughs> However, <laughs> when it comes to like you said, this is business. Sarah, don't cry. I have enough emotions for everybody in the room, so it's good. Yeah, I mean, my 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 emotion is usually anger. Like, you know, because I look no, at it no, like no, not, you should know your business. Right. Yeah. And so I get like these little things that would have pissed me off, too. And I right. would have been a little bit more pushy, just like you were, because what's the big deal to get yeah. it done? I don't want to hear your sob story. Um, we all worry about what's going to happen in Florida with this hurricane. Um, I feel bad for the people who have already been affected by Helene. So we all worry about this. I'm not like a, not right. a human, but, but like, the let's truth is, remember, right. first of all, we're not, we're not even in the cone down here. Right. Number one. Right. Okay. Number two, um, you, like you said, this was Friday. Okay. Nothing was happening. And, and this is your job, man. Like yeah. this is your job. And the if agreement you came in on Thursday. You had all of Friday, yeah. Saturday, should you have worked. And since you were so concerned, we first heard it was becoming a storm on Monday. Mm -hmm. So, like, even Monday you could have done it. So, yeah. anyways, I just, I'm not one for excuses. Mm -hmm. You know, That's there's, um, I have, a, there's a real estate partner that we have. And, you know, he, he 
called me out for doing something and I, and I was, he's very direct and he's a high, high producer. And I was like, you're absolutely right. And I just own it. My bad. Mm-hmm. I got it. Mm-hmm. I'll call the client. Done. I work on it. Mm-hmm. Won't happen again. You know, like that's okay. Like I'm not perfect. No, we're all human. Sarah's definitely not perfect. <laughs> you know, and <laughs> those two faceless. No, just, but no, but it's like all you in five do, minutes, it's going to be like four faceless. Oh yeah, it's, it's going to keep, keep up in the number, oh, right? For sure, a hundred percent. Unless there's no martinis here, but maybe we are martinis. <laughs> oh, I would love a martini. But there was a. Uh, is it today? When are we supposed to go drinking? Is it today or tomorrow? For the hurricane party. Hurricane party. That you're having a bounce for everybody. I don't, well, see, the problem is I don't know if there's any TVs going on. Like, if the storm's bad. We're not going to lose electricity. I don't think we are either. Well, not electricity, but direct TV does oh, not the greatest. Oh, yeah, no, direct TV is bad. I, th- I don't, I think we have direct TV. I don't even know. Mm. Not involved that part of the business. Where was I? It got me lost. We were talking uh, about drinking. Hurricane party, drinking martini. Is it time yet? The answer is yes. What else were you saying? I We're totally all human and we make mistakes. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yes. And I'm perfect. Thank you. And I'm perfect. I got See, it. I got, got it. it. I got it. I didn't actually forget. I was trying to show you this is how a mistake could be made. Right. Oh, so wow. I was giving an example in the first person. <laughs> um, no, but but yes, you know, like, and there's nothing wrong with making mistakes. Exactly. Just admit it and move on. That's the thing. But I, I will say that it's not a vindictive part of me, but there's a point where uh, you did something that I, I wanted you to, uh, to I don't know, this morning. So I asked if she had, there was somebody who's making an introduction to her, to a couple loan officers for us to possibly meet, bring on the show, possibly recruit, et cetera. And I said, you know, did you, you know, I said, I, I gave you the opportunity to answer properly. I did answer which, properly. I think you read it wrong. No, no, no. I gave you the opportunity. I said, it's okay if you forgot. Just let me know and then let's rekindle. And she and then she responded saying, yes, I forgot. Mm-hmm. And so for me, like, that's not a big deal. Own okay. it. Own move, it. On. move on. It's over. But I, I for some reason, I li- it's not, a, I'm not a finger guy. I'm not, and I won't mention it again. I'm not like that. But it's important that people own it because... I get like you don't. I I want you to realize that feeling, that when we make mistakes, that's how you don't make it again. Exactly. If it's too simple, if I solve it too quickly, if I gloss over it without ever mentioning it, my concern is is that there was no repercussion for the mistake. Therefore, the the it will that behavior will continue. Whatever it is. Well, it's the same thing with totally with like so friendships, so, right? You're somebody gets you angry. Uh-huh. If you don't call them out or you say, I'm upset by this, then how do they know, right? Yep. You, you've got to just be upfront yep. and say it. Relationship genius over But here. I think in yeah. our business, so many people make <laughs> mistakes and they don't even know they're making a mistake, right? Like they're just- Or they're finger pointing. Right. It wasn't me. It was oh, this. Exactly. It wasn't it was my the title company. It was yeah. the lender. It was this. It was in the, in- the inspector. Uh, just really quick to go back to this morning's thing. So you're- comment was, how did it go with so-and-so and introducing us to the two LOs? And I said, it didn't. I will add it to my list. And then you wrote, it's okay if you forgot. The it didn't meant it did not happen. I knew it didn't. Yeah, right. And I knew that you forgot. Yes, I understand. And so what I was doing is I was giving you an out for saying, you know what? I forgot to do what we talked about doing. I did. I said, it didn't happen. I'll add it to my list. It didn't happen doesn't mean I forgot. Just this, it, it didn't happen could be she didn't introduce me nope, to that. Nope, then I would have said I called her, but she has yet to introduce me. It's a choice of words that I simply wanted you to own it. Ah, yes. I'm sorry. I didn't own it properly in the way that you were searching for me to own it. <laughs> no, as long as you own it and you realize you made a mistake again, uh, that's all. <laughs> also, I'm pretty sure I was driving back from Pembroke Pines. Uh, no, no, no. This was at like 7 in the morning. Oh, so I was driving to Pembroke Pines. Possibly. Yes, got it. Possibly. Okay. So tell us more about you. Where are you from? I'm from Cleveland, Ohio. Usually we start with that, by the way, but somehow Sarah's not new to these first date things. So <laughs> I am <she> new. <laughs> no, did I say new? You said to. I'm not new. No. She's new to these first date I things. I am. Sorry, oh, recently apologize. divorced or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 
But yeah, Atlanta, usually Georgia. that's an early one that we right. start with. So Cleveland, Ohio. Cleveland, Ohio. I love the Midwesterners. Um, I get people along with say you guys. that, but then when they she's meet like, I'll me, prove you wrong. No, right? <laughs> they meet me and they're like, "Are you from New York?" Because the way she's I am, feisty. yeah, I'm a little. I, I never belonged there. I don't think. I don't think my mom belonged there. I don't. We didn't belong there. But anyway, um, I had a good education that way. There I you had, go. You know, I okay. had a nice little Midwestern upbringing. But, uh, and it's fun there. Cleveland is fun. People think we cow tip, but it's Buc- actually a big city. You're Ohio State fan? <laughs> um, sure, if you want me to be. Okay, um, so not really. No. Not into football. Uh, I was Cleveland Indians until they changed their name, and yeah, that's guard. the end of them. Yep. Uh, they're what done. They they're the dead Browns? to me now. Or the Guardians. The Guardians. Oh, okay. Yeah. They're in the playoffs at the moment. So sorry to hear that. I don't like the name either. I don't like the commanders. I don't like any of that yeah, stuff either. I'm, it's just kind of not cool because yeah. Chief Wahoo, you grew up in Cleveland. He's just a thing. He's like, you don't yeah. get rid of Chief Wahoo. Sorry. You just don't. Right. Um, he's a cool guy. So, yeah. So I came here in 97. Okay. And my family's here too. Okay. Um, so, yeah. Became a realtor in 2000. Uh, divorced. No, no kids. Back. That's it. No kids or kids? No kids. Do you have pets? I had a pet. She yeah. just passed away. Yeah, she knows about six months ago. My Sorry little, to hear that. my little Bella. She mm. had dementia. She Aww. was about sixteen and a half. Wow. Is that a dog or a cat? It was a dog. Okay, gotcha. a little puffy Bichon. Oh, she was a rock star. Yeah. Think you'll get another one? Eventually. I don't want to deal with it right now. Yeah. I came off when they have dementia. That's a lot. It's a lot. I would come home to crazy messes and. Uh, how do you how do you diagnose? Uh, let's not go there because I'm going to go into. All right, because I, I, so my brain, my curious George brain wants oh, to ask boy. questions, but at the same token, being a dog person, look at the empathy I'm showing right now, Sarah. Yeah. I would not want anyone asking questions about my dog. Oh, no, I'm cool with that. After, I just, after she passed. Yeah, no, I'm very, I now, very close back to my before the day after um, she passed away, I saw, she was the first person I saw. Janine was the first person I saw, and she looked at me, and I said it, and she was like, and I said, don't, I don't want, don't look at me ever again. <laughs> and I walked away <laughs> because I knew she would make me cry like all day. You know, I'd be crying all day. So, um, but it's six months out. So I'm okay now, but um, she's it's hard, unbelievable it's hard to fill. The amount of, of love that we can have for these little I like dogs animals. better than people. I've always Most been Most dog person. lovers do, I think. Yeah. I yeah. really love dogs. Well, I, they don't make the same mistakes. You know what I mean? They don't forget to, to call people. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You know, they, they're they always they, happy. They make the connections. You give them a treat. They're happy. <laughs> yeah. My favorite is the when treats are a lot less expensive. To that, right? <laughs> Emmanuel. So I have two kids, and Emmanuel will always compare our parenting styles, mm-hmm. and you know he'll say, "Well, I'll send memes over." There he'll was, say, I "Just sent I'll over say a really good." I'll say about my kids, and he'll be like, no, "I get it. I mean, it's a lot of work when you gotta." And he'll insert himself my as dog. if so I don't have kids. Oh, you don't? No, he doesn't. And I'm like, <laughs> you can leave your kid at home for hours on end and you put food in a bowl and they don't talk back and like you walk it on a leash to go to the bathroom like it's a totally different experience yeah yeah I don't think so I think it's I uh I think that the psychology behind it is I'm with him I am it's very similar obviously I think children are much easier because you you get something back from them I don't know when Boo Boo's hurt. I don't know if her feelings are this. My my dog's insanely stubborn, and she's got all sorts of. Oh, uh, she gets that <laughs> But like your kid can go to Grandma, the fridge and get obviously. a drink, right? True. Yes. Like my dog. Well, although she she did get, I'd be sitting on the couch and I'd see the pantry door open. She was a little thirteen pound puffy thing. Mm-hmm. She would open the pantry herself and then drag her bag of tra- treats out. She's like, "Look!" I'm-. And of course, she needed to get one because if she could get that far, she deserved it. Absolutely. But but like your kids can go and get themselves a drink or make themselves lunch. You know, dogs can't do that. Right. You guys you just know? pour food in a bowl. Okay. So <laughs> since you don't have kids, let's see if you agree with me. Oh boy. On this one. So I am a wooden spoon survivor. Okay. <laughs> Um, I had to, I had to survive getting spanked on the butt with a hand and with a wooden spoon. And like, I think most of our generations did nowadays, like we have this conversation at lunch and a lot of parents are not into it. I I don't think you, you can, I'll let you speak for yourself, but I don't get like, to me, I don't mean hitting a kid in the face. I don't mean hitting too hard. Like, but a little the point is that you, you gotta. I don't know. It's like a. It's like nature. You know, there's a reason that the the mama bear or the mama lion, like they grab their cub by the back and neck and they pull mm-hmm. them back. Like, 
it, that you've got to show that you are the bigger person. And I don't mean that in a negative way, just like. Well, before. I don't think kids are disciplined enough. And mm -hmm. I mean, you know, again, we'll sit and talk about this and people are going to laugh at us right now because we don't, we don't kids, have kids. Right. Sure. And my niece and nephew, I'm never allowed to say anything because I don't have kids. So but I don't think that they are um, disciplined. Like my mother, all she had. To, we joke now, my brother and I, we joke now, like she would do the one, two, three thing. Mm -hmm. What would happen if you got to three? And she laughed. She's like, I don't even fucking know. You know, I don't mm -hmm. even know. Mm -hmm. And because we never let her because the tone. Mm hmm. I heard that tone. Mm -hmm. To this day, I hear that tone, and mm -hmm. I stop what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. You know, the, it was just the that advantage fear. that they have today, though, that parents have today, the access to information, mm -hmm. um, the psychology that you can learn about online on your phone in seconds on how to handle a situation, if you want to, is so readily available. Mm. And I think that the wooden spoon survivors, our generation. <laughs> There's going to be a class action I'm on this. I know, right? I'm getting you a shirt. So I, I really want one. I like, I'm going to get you a shirt. Things. I yeah. think it's a it's a game changer. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to get you a shirt. Yeah, plus every, all the young people bounce have no clue what the hell it means. They right. don't. <laughs> on the back of it, it's going to be a cartoon with a like a, a person bending Spanking. over. Yeah. Yeah, that would be funny. Joey, the bouncing idiot. Uh, <laughs> that would be fun. <laughs> Yeah, so what kind of bank are we talking about? I, so. will, I will say this when you say access to information. While that is a wonderful thought, there is too much information with too many schools of thought, with too many philosophies, and too many doctors chiming in on what you're supposed to do and what you're not supposed to do. And so you can... Google, googly paralysis by analysis. Yeah. Anything. How do I deal with a kid throwing a temper tantrum in Publix? And you will have 45 million different ways of dealing with it. And then you'll have people, parents, commenting on the articles in different scenarios, in different cases of what worked, what didn't work, why this is a horrible idea, why this is a brilliant idea. But why don't you, instead of just randomly Googling, why don't you find someone that you like and respect mm -hmm. and that you find has given other good advice. Mm -hmm. And instead of constantly going to Google, just like what we talked about, circle back to business here, just like we talked about, if we are Follow the connectors, mm -hmm. we are the professionals out there, then, hey, you know what? Pam introduced me to Johnny and Johnny was great. And Emmanuel introduced me to Bob and Bob was great. And whatever it is, now all of a sudden, maybe they know a thing or two. Right. right. So I think what happens is, is that one, you parent very similar to the way that you were parented, because I think it's just something that you grew up with. And it's so it's a natural kind of tendency to lean into the way that you were taught. Um, I think also that is that you, a good thing or a bad thing? It depends. I just watched that show Monsters about the Menendez I watched brothers, that too. but it depends who you ask. They were all abused all the way up. I think it's the opposite. So, but I think, but I think it depends, right? So I think there's things about. So for me, for instance, there I am probably very much a parent like my parents were parents. Um, I parent more like an 80s parent than I do a 2024 parent. Um, I'm definitely not a helicopter mom. Like I've had moms say to me, and I think that they meant What's it a as helicopter a helicopter mom. I'll tell you in a second. I think they meant it as a compliment, but it kind of came out not. They're like, you, you kind of just act like you've had like five kids. And I'm like, what is that supposed to mean? You're like, you're just not very you like. like you've had five kids. Ooh. <laughs> I think that's what they meant. I'm getting a raise out of this one. Uh -huh. um, but is like, that what she meant? A helicopter mom is more like you. Like if your kid's on the monkey bars, you're like following them. You won't let them take a step without you holding on to them because you're afraid they're going to fall. You're going to uh, afraid they're going to make a mistake. Whereas me, I was kind of like, go at it. Like if you're going to fall down, you're going to fall down and you're going to learn. And if you eat a piece of dirt, like you're going to eat some dirt. Like I was a lot more, um, gave them a longer leash to kind of feel Both, themselves because out. they say they say you're first they say you're first usually like the parents are like <gasps> but i wasn't huddle, like everything is super super and then on the second they're like and eh, yeah. they're throwing them Correct. around so there's a lot of right i for whatever reason was never like that maybe i didn't have the capacity to be when i had julia who knows what the reasoning is but i parent a lot like my parents parented um, and then usually well, the seventies were different back then too, you know, and you could do a lot. <laughs> I was born in the eighties. I'm a lot younger than you. Oh my God, you guys, I'm born in the seventies. I am born He's in the seventies. I, I am, I think I'm older than you. I was born like in the very early seventies. So, you know, we're yeah. talking Tail old people. Seventies, yeah, early eighties. I, so 
And but then you have the other parent, right? Because it takes two, obviously. And then they tend to parent the way that they think they should parent. And then sometimes you have differences in parents. You tell my mom it takes two. Two people made you, Emmanuel. Made me, but not raised me. I understand. And your mom did a, God, I love her so much. I can't say anything bad about the way she raised you because it's just, it's not a dig to you. It would be a dig to her. And I like her so much more. <laughs> <laughs> I think I like it's the opposite, you. though, because it's just sort of like my mom and I were talking about the other day. My parents both smoked. Okay. Um, a pack of day cigarettes. Certain things like that. My I brother think. and I do not smoke because right. of that. Right. So I have a lot of friends that had alcoholics. His parents, they don't drink because right. of. So that my exact brother, reason. I look at like my brother, and he, my dad, I'm some like my mom raised us pretty much for the most part. More him than me because um, I'm older. But they, my brother is like the he wants to be super dad because my dad wasn't super dad. Okay, that makes sense. Right. So he goes the opposite, and I think I see that a lot too, where people do the opposite. They didn't. They don't want to be like whatever their parent was. I think you take like, so if there's something that was missing or something that wasn't great, you take that and you go, how can I overcompensate for, not overcompensate in a bad way, but how can I really make sure that this is something that I am really strong at? Cause well, I the, don't want the kid to feel the way that I felt when this happened. There's That's a fork exactly. in the road though. No, some, there's no, a fork in the road. Definitely. Because that. some people will do that and others will not. Well, I, I think mean, it also depends on your personality. But like, for instance, my mom was sick most of my entire life. She got sick with a nerve degenerative disease when I was in second grade. So I watched her ailing my entire life until she passed. So for me, I'm very much on top of like, you know, I get my skin tested because I have skin cancer in my family and we have other things that you know have gone on. And so I am very on top of that stuff because the last thing that I want, because I know how it felt, was to have my kids watch me be, be sick, sick and my health deteriorate. Right. So that's something that I'm super hypersensitive to when people are like, you're nuts. And I'm like, it's fine because I would rather be on top of that oh, to really prevent, right? right? So my kids don't have to feel the way that I felt watching my mom progressively get worse. Right. So it's probably the same with your that's brother. That's exactly. It's yeah. like overcompensating a little bit. I saw, I, I, yeah, there was somebody in my family who quit alcohol and I was just so devastated by it. So I've made sure to never do that. I know, me too. <laughs> yeah. Always yeah, about having control. Ball. As we drink no. waters. Yeah. yeah. I was the kid quit. like drunk. I'm Jewish. So Passover, you know, oh, happy new year. Oh, thank you. You know, all the, the wine on Passover. It's like wine, 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 yeah. wine. And I was a little kid, like it was the seventies. It's the seventies <laughs> and, um, and early eighties. And my parents were like, whatever. And I would be like asleep on my grandmother's stairway because I'd pass out from all the wine. Have probably. you watched this show? What's the, I, I can't ever remember the name of the show. I need a little bit more than that. The one that I've been talking about for like the last three days. Monsters? Uh, watching this, not with us, something. Nobody wants this? Nobody wants, Nobody wants this thing. Oh, I that looks seen too it. stupid. I don't think I can hear oh, it. Right. It's, it's really cute. I'm not like that cute. kind of Jew. Did yeah, you just so say it's I, really it's cute? Yeah, I'm so it's like not. A, it's a romantic yeah, comedy. I don't do those very well. But it's funny because. <laughs> do you like scary? Yeah. Are you one of those that like relaxes the end of Halloween your day and falls asleep to like, like Dateline coming. and murder mysteries? Not Dateline. Okay. The real stuff bores me. I don't want to, I don't know. But okay. I, Halloween's coming. It's, it's, it's my holiday. It's well, totally my yeah, holiday. Close. What are you going to wear? I don't know yet. I have my red eyes, though. I have red contacts. Ooh. Yeah, I've got my red eyes. Um, I don't know. I'm thinking, like, something vampire -y. I like the scary. I'm not that person that's like, oh, let's just in a wear those on a Friday night once in a while? Or um, no? Oh, that's actually a good idea. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's a good idea. I don't know that Dada is going to be where you take. If you find probably a date with the red though. contacts, Dada is not going to be yeah, the place Yeah, probably not take Dada, you. right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, I don't think so. I'm not yeah. even sure where downtown that would kind of fly. But I'd like to see that. Do we have a picture of these? Um, probably somewhere on my feed. Okay. Yeah, from last Halloween. Okay. Red, yeah. red is. Uh... Last year I dressed up as Emmanuel. Oh. That's actually hysterical. I had a oh wig, gosh. glasses. I had a little toy dog. <laughs> I... <laughs> it was the Benjamin Button older version. The old version. Okay. Yes. It was before both facelifts. <laughs> <laughs> the. Uh... I walked in and he looked at me and I was like, surprise. Right? <laughs> My greatest Halloween costume, I think. You know, self-proclaimed, anyways, oh is probably Billy Idol. Oh, there I you go. Had, I could see that. I, I went you could had totally my do hair that. dyed. Oh, yeah. I had my contacts in. I had black leather oh, pants. Yeah. I had a leather vest that didn't like didn't close. I had like the gloves. I put all the the stuff on. The chains and and stuff. I had it. I I put an English accent on. So we were at a party on a Friday night. And, How old uh, were you? I'm just trying to understand. Uh, 2012, 13, 
So whatever that is. Like almost like a little so, bit 10 years so ago. So was that 10 years ago? So I was 32 to 34. <laughs> <laughs> Carry the two. Continue. Um, so mid-30s. So, uh, yeah. And then uh, the next day um, was now the party was over, but I decided to wear the costume again because it was so good. And right. I invested so much money dyeing the hair. Right. Like, it's like a whole forget thing. Forget the money, but just the time. Right. You like, got to get used out of it. Yeah. I know. It was uh, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, God, that was a good tough. one. Oh no, actually, I found a better one. We had a group of us, about ten of us, that went as wrestlers. Oh boy, professional oh, wrestlers. Oh, like um, I was, I was uh, like Hulk Hogan, uh, like Ultimate that whole warrior. Right. Yes. Were the, you guys all in like speedos? I, this is when I had long hair. Yes. Oh wow. And there's a pose of one of my best friends, Mark. And he has such the, like, it's the most unmanly pose ever, like, <laughs> back rounded, but his hips kind of, like, pushed back. I'm like, bro, like, I don't know, like, the the insecurity in this picture, like, psych- it's a psychologist's dream, I'm sure. That's hysterical. But, yes, it was very, very, uh, that, was a, that was a good one. Yeah. What are you going to be this year? <sighs> good question. I haven't dressed up in years. Is Bounce going to have a Halloween party? I don't even know. I'm, I'm not involved with that part of the business. Okay. That's, that's my standard line for just about everything. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could say that for You want to register a complaint? I am not part of the it's business. It's not a part of the business. No, I'm not, not a part, part of that business. business. No. No. Uh-huh. no. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. But all right. So let's let's wrap up the show. What I'd like you to do is give us one tip. Ooh. The, the most important tip that you would like to give a consumer about buying in this modern world. I don't think it's even a modern tip. And I say this all the time. Like you said before, nobody reads the contracts. And I tell people, I will literally explain it to you paragraph by paragraph, and they don't they don't read it. And I get it's back signed in two seconds, and I know you haven't read it. It's 13 pages. And um, read what you sign, people. Read what you sign. Yeah. Like, unbelievable. And then they're mad. <laughs> you know, they don't know. And, then the, you know, right now I have one. She's mad at everything, you know. Um, I read it to her paragraph by paragraph, and she's mad at everything. So you just read what you sign. It's not that hard. And if you don't want to, like I said, I'll go over it with you. You can get an attorney that will make sure you understand. But these are contracts. People act like because it's a realtor. You know, real, there's realtors are not taken that seriously, clearly. So, you know, we send you over a piece of paper. They just sign it. Like you said, they mm-hmm. that person signed it on the trunk of a car. It is an actual contract right. that can be enforced by law. Do so. we blame technology for, is the technology in this case the helicopter Possibly. mom? Possibly, because it used to be. Where you had to print it. You had I'd to print you it. You would read we'd it. We'd sit in a Burger King. We'd look right. at the houses. We'd go to Burger King, and we'd sit down, and we'd go over the contract. Right. And they'd ask me all their questions, and that's what would happen. But no now. No DocuSign just kind of walks you through exactly. it. just tells you where to click, sign. Click, you send click, it. Click, 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 yeah. And, you know. This is this isn't um, like HIPAA laws, like things that just don't change. This is this is stuff that you need to understand. You know your deposits, what your people. It's shocking to me that they don't read the first page. The first page is literally what you're paying, mm-hmm. what you're putting down in deposit. I mean, I don't even understand what you're mortgaging. Um, how do you not look at those numbers? And I'll be honest, I'm human. You know. I make mistakes too. It's right. I would like for you to read it. Yeah. You and Sarah must get along. Exactly. I make tons of mistakes. Yeah. <laughs> tons of mistakes every day. But you know, it is, it's such a shocking thing that people don't read what they sign and act like it's not a big deal. Yeah. You're buying a house, people. It's a huge purchase. It's probably the biggest purchase most people make. Yeah, ever. Right. Well, yeah. Thank you so much for being a guest. If you want to, if you could please uh, just give your coordinates for any consumers that want to get a hold of you. We have a huge, huge, huge audience, so I'm sure <laughs> like your phone might blow up. Uh, so just be careful. But yes, if you want to give your coordinates, how can people find you on CoastalLivingSouthFlorida.com. It's uh, Pam Moore's and Real Estate is all my socials. Um, if you hit anything Coastal Living South Florida, it'll link you everywhere to everywhere. And High Octane Real Estate Podcast, which, which is, is awesome, by the uh, way. Janine is my producer as well. We so. didn't even talk about your podcast. Yeah, no, my podcast we'll is you guys. Show. Yours is really fun, but mine's a little bit more offensive. I like okay. that. You guys are more polite. We'll do, we'll do another show with more podcast centric, and we'll do martinis. Yeah, there you go. Sounds good. Don't For let Pam me and I, up. not Emmanuel. Don't let it's me grounded. mix them. You won't, won't be able to walk home. Yeah, perfect. Walk to your car, but yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thanks for, for being having me, you guys. Thank you. Okay, that's enough whining for one day. We are so happy that you could join us today on Stop Whining About Real Estate. So please, not only listen, but subscribe, follow us, download, share, and if you're feeling it, give us a five star review. 
Hey, and if you'd like to be a guest on the show, please email stopwhining at choicemortgage.com. Thanks so much.